Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello all welcome back to our sessions on precision oncology in the last session we have seen on the role of cell culture in precision oncology this two sessions following two sessions will be the next session of the last session where we will be working on more of preclinical models for for cancer so such as what what are the disadvantages of cell culture we have clearly discussed so we have discussed why <clears throat> the generations passaging of many cells to generations may be losing the the cells the tumor cells the cancer cell lines may be losing their original phenotypes or their genotypes and the original characteristics of the tumor will be lost so we have really come into terms why is it important to have a proper uh, two dimensional or a three dimensional current color cell line which is representative of the original tumor for an each specific patient so further moving on we will be discussing about the preclinical models here in this two sessions the first for the first half of this session will be focusing on the patient derived explants followed by organ on chips or the tumor or the organoids models and then in the next session we will be dis uh, discussing in detail about the patient de derived xenografts or the mouse models used for cancer so why are we using so many preclinical models why is it necessary because it is like each for each tumor is its or it's different for an each individual uh, individual based on the genotype and and it's and some of these tumors are very heterogeneous so it may not be enough for a single population of cells such as a cell line to represent the complete genome genome or to do the complete tumor characteristics so moving on here is the introduction of the first slide so this is a model of a tumor microenvironment so if you recollect well we have been discussing why what what is the role of an immunotherapy during our immunotherapy sessions so where how are the immunotherapeutics or the icbs uh, immune chain block the blockators they are blockades they have to be very very efficient in moving the tumor from an immunosuppressive cold tumor tumor microenvironment to a pro inflammatory hot tumor microenvironment so here in that regard we have discussed in detail about the pd pd1 with the pdl1 blockers now here if we can clearly recollect there are many types of cells many it's not a single homogeneous cells so this is shows a simplified schematic of the tumor microenvironment it is spatially it is very very organized landscape and it includes the non malignant stroma such as your uh, <coughs> the myeloid immune subcells the cancer associated fibroblast the blood and the lymphatic vessels so generally with this tumors with this immunosuppressive immune res, uh, immune filtrate they resemble the chronic inflammation and they are termed as immune cold and are associated with poor prognosis such immune uh, immune infiltrations you have the the m2 macrophages the myeloid derived suppressor uh, cells that is your mdscs then you have the cd4 plus t helpers and the cd the regulatory t rex cells and the terminally exhausted cd8 t cells the regulatory b cells the ccr21 cells all all the monocytes and these are which are which and this whole and the mature dendritic cells else with which are enriched in the immunoregulatory molecules so here you can clearly see the immune filtration which resembles an acute inflammation and it ex and it exhibits a pro inflammatory or a hot immune immune filtrate infiltrating which includes your ele elevated levels of the cd8 t helper cd4 tells the natural killer cells and the group 2 innate lymphoid cells the m1 type group 2 the m1 type macrophages eosinophils c3 cx3 c chemokine receptor 1 monocytes so these tumors are generally excellent candidates for immunotherapy strategies so this 
all the so taking into regard the vast immune landscape of tumors which spans from an immune cold to an immune hot and which is closely linked to the response of an either an immunotherapeutic or a targeted therapeutic so 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 this there are the, to make a better permeable targeted drugs it is very very important to prepare a clean clinical model preclinical model which represents the original tumor size here we have taken only example with respect to an immunotherapy but any kind of an tumor an heterogeneous tumor for example a lung cancer the egfr the wild type and the egfr mutant which has a targeted therapy for such as your gefitinib the tarsus sin kinase inhibitors they all <coughs> have to be well characterized for each particular individual so this pharmacological spectrum should uh, it, it should include a spectrum of tumor directed or immune directed drugs or anti and anti antibodies that would enhance the immune mediated tumor cell killing it is very very important to have very good preclinical models which are representative or which we call them as avatars of the pay, same patient tumor so if you mimic this tumors or if you mimic this tumor microenvironment in an in vitro condition in vitro that is in a lab condition yes can be see and give the same drug as the patient is being administered in the clinic and look for the response of this particular tumors to the stress drugs yes can we predict the outcome of the therapy in a preclinical model or in the laboratory yes many studies and several much the whole pharma is going in this direction so the different models which are used here are the spiroid the organoids or the organon chips which are very well characterized the patient derived xenografts your mouse models and the patient derived explants so spiroids are nothing but it could be even a a single line a cell line which is allowed to grow in the presence of in the in the presence or absence of drug and that to the cells are allowed to form clusters rather than forming a two 2d monolayers so as a result we would be able to have a necrotic zone zone of necrosis along with a line of living cells yes we can produce a, we can produce some hypoxia like conditions in by growing spiroids organ on chip several researchers and it's a lot of engineering technology getting into it to develop many organ on chips for many of the cancer models such as the breast lung and very well colon and the pancreatic model which will be be seeing in this session the coming to the patient derived xenografts very very well explored so many labs have come up with mouse models several mouse models such as the and based on the uh, immune status the nude mouse nude mice the skid mice the nod skid mice several mice models they have come into play which will, will we will be talking in the next next session and then the explant session patient divided at explants which are ex vivo cultures where the surgically resected tumor is grown in the lab for a couple of days and the same drugs or maybe to try the efficacy of the novel therapeutics on this tumors can be tested so this patient derived explants have been very well used to develop novel therapeutics and it's primarily very very important to immediately see the effect of a therapeutic drug on the patient on the same tumor to which the same patient will be taking up the same drug so before the outcome of the drug or the the patient how the drug before the patient himself gives an outcome or how to see the progression free survival and all that this particular uh, treatment can be seen by in the patient derived explants so and the drug response can be studied and we can all in all this particular or uh, preclinical models the end point analysis is to study the response of the drug is to is to study for any other several variant dna rna or the protein changes for all the studies here it's uh, to see is to check for the drug response uh, to check if the patient ha can if this particular tumor can respond to the, the drug to the same drug to which the patient is been given therapy and at the same time can we predict the drug response suppose there can the tumor suppose can it 
can the tumor how aggressive can the, is the tumor is can it quickly implant in the mice yes the more quickly is it going to be uh, engrafted in the mice it could be an aggressive tumor same way if the explant is it able to grow very established it's a growth in the in, in the in vitro culture and respond to the drug can be assessed and this can be checked uh, and the endpoint analysis is to do for the different drug response assays and also we can also predict the, the DNA the, and the DNA changes and the RNA changes upon response to the drug. This slide is the patient derived explants of glioblastoma where we can clearly see that the patient derived tumor which has different cells, different other, other cells and where at the same cell number of cells have been, have been able to replicate it, have been able to brought back to the explant culture. This is about with respect to the patient 1 and patient 2 where here we can clearly see that the difference in the different types of cells where the heterogeneity as we all aware glioblastoma is a very heterogeneous tumor. So the different clonal distributions of cells is maintained in PDEB cells and the proportions can be clearly estimated. We will come back to this slide after we clearly understand what are the different preclinical models. The 2D cell lines which we have clearly seen in our last session and the different organon chips, the spheroid cultures, the organoid cultures and the patient derived monogram. Each one have their advantages and disadvantages where the organon uh, chips can be grown in a controlled environment mimicking the host in vitro, uh, host in vivo conditions and it can be facilitated whole tissue tissue interaction and they, we can even have the ability to choose a co-culture where you can have uh, have two two cultures growing here. However, it could be very much, uh, it, it has to be the conditions have to be very much, uh, well they have to be, um, could be very inconsistent and mostly this particular model is used for cell lines and sometimes it's very difficult to establish protocols for some tough models such as your lung. Then the spheroid cultures, yes, a good zone of necrosis can be seen and we have umpteen mark. Uh, 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 plastic wear in the market to help us generate spheroids for any cell type. So though, though, though the protocols are simple, it has even a co-culture availability and it can be reproduced at very high much because using the cell number. Suppose you have used only 2000 cells or 5000 cells, yes it can be highly reproducible and it can be patient specific where we take up only the cells from a sink tumor cells and you generate for example a mammal smears. The poor structural organization and the poor supply of oxygen to the nutrient core and the uh, to the spheroid core and the variable spheroid size and the variations in between patient to patient type could result uh, have a very great disadvantage on, on taking this assay to high throughput levels. Again we have the organoid co-cultures where multiple cell lineages, complex structural organization and patient, they are very very patient specific and we can which we will be seeing in the further on in this particular session. However, the same disadvantages as with the spheroids, the mammospheres, highly interpatient variability there is and it is very tough to bring in a downstream uh, experimental analysis to scale up the downstream analysis, experimental analysis and the high cost to make it is this organite cultures always to use it in a, in a very economical setups and then coming to the patient derived models which we will discuss it in the next class. So this particular patient derived uh, explants as the first human histoculture studies were first as we have mentioned before they were pioneered by Robert Hoffman and they involved the generation of tissue slices uh, from tumors obtained directly from surgery, surgery from the operation theater when they cultured for extended periods of time, time you using the specialized collagen gel. So this was a very fantastic idea and this ensured that the stromal component of this particular surgically resected tissues is maintained So and it is maintained intact. So cells were, man, can, were found to maintain properties of their both in vivo state which includes the spatial organization and the cell differentiation function and the more, more and the presence of more uh, of say many cell types within a single tumor they are all well 
retained. So histocultures, uh, they were also called, patient derived explants were also called earlier as histocultures and they were adapted for use in drug uh, studies to assess the chemotherapy uh, response and were successful and these were, this term was also used as the HDRA that is your Historiculture drug response assay for uh, for assessing the chemotherapy response. So the HDRA studies reported around 86 percent accuracy in predicting the drug resistance, especially for your colon cancer and the stomach cancer. Correlation for the clinic for the drug resistance, the clinical trial studies to clinical sense drug sensitivity in all these two person to these two, two particular cancer was very well high. Several studies have employed this PDE cultures to lung cancer. So, there have been all that they had required is to require a gelatin sponge or a collagen sponge or to use a matrix grid. But a very well in the market, so many grids are available where this explants can be cultured using the sub uh, using this particular grid. And there is also another subversion method where uh, where the tissue is completely submerged in media in tissue culture dishes by and by the grid method in which the tissue is in contact with media through the matrix membrane or a membrane supported by a plastic or metal matrix uh, grid or by the spawns method. So, even though several methods have been developed, this has been very very well uh, exploited to directly study the efficacy of the drugs on the, uh, the efficacy of the drugs on the tissue model. For any for any tumor, these protocols are very simple and they can be extrapolated for lung, oral, or for breast cancer. And they have an advantage, have been advantage because they can facilitate all the sponges, the the collagen bases. They have an advantage because they will uh, allow they they have been uh, as they facilitate the distribution of medium nutrients and drugs through. Uh, through the explants without having the explant to uh, to be submerged in the medium. They also may be maintained as fra fragments, the tissues can be continued to be maintained as fragments or processed for general, general tissues the slicing. So, this is all with the very very well important so different milestones which are given here. So, we have already clearly discussed about the different particular advantage and the disadvantages of this particular model. So, all that we can we have to be stressing here is that there has been even the, all these clinical models or whatever the preclinical models are very very important because we will be seeing in the next session how many so many compounds enter the uh, trial phase here, but they fail the, uh, to come to this particular this lot of iteration rate. So, to reduce the iteration iteration rate or to, to check for the better efficiency of for different efficient preclinical models have to be developed to with less concept of complexity and to have a very scalable high scalable high throughput pro procedures and all most importantly all these models preclinical models have to be they have to be having a good lifespan and they should be amendable for large tissue scale tissue constructs generation and for tissues that are <coughs> they should be uh, suitable for tissues that are uh, physiologically at air liquid uh, interface such as the skin and the lung where it's very very important to maintain that uh, ali and and they should and majority they should be of be able to have a very high reproducibility for example the same tissues they should be able if you are able to propagate them for several generations they should be able to give, give the same kind the each generation should be able to give the same kind of drug response to at each particular time here we will be checking about patient derived explants of glioblastoma Glioblastoma is one of the most lethal cancer, human cancers and it is a, represents a solid tumor which is very very heterogeneous in nature and it is a glioblastoma multiforme. Although they have been glioblastomas have been characterized at the molecular level and the several pre 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 targeted therapies are there. They, 
they have a little highly little impact due to the heterogeneity and the plasticity it because of this particular cancers so and for several generations there have been only cell line models or several decades only cell line models have been employed for glioblastoma for for, for, for the clinical models however one particular group leblanc et al they described a 3d culture method that used patient derived explants and which allowed loved the retention of the pay of the uh, retention and recapturation of the genetic and phenotypes of the original tumor and they have gone about to so they have as mentioned tumors contain heterogeneous neoplastic cells and diverse stromal elements and that collectively function at the dynamic ecosystem and this complicate complicates the predictive modeling at the ex vivo level so they this particular leblanc at all they have used a single cell analysis to demonstrate that the patient derived explants replicate the tumor diversity as it can be represented here here we can see how the complete tumor diversity is retained in the patient derived explant whereas this the gliosphere cultures of the patient 1 and the patient 2 which may not which are only getting only the small sample of the cells from the tumors glioma is one of the most lethal cancer and glioblastoma represents the stroli tumor with striking intramural uh, intramural intratumoral heterogeneity heterogeneity and it has been termed as glioblastoma multiforme although they have been uh, glioblastomas have been extensively characterized at the molecular level and several targeted therapies are available but the for the tumor researchers for several uh, research decades they have been uh, using only cell line grown grown in serum or in plastic as models because there is little uh, and there is always there been a little scope for developing this particular models in an uh, ex vivo cultures but there is little evidence that these cell lines have similar tumor genetics and the transcriptional uh, transcriptional regrets or in vivo tumor growth patterns to those of this cancers so in this particular group by lebank et al they describe the 3d culture method that uses the patient derived explants and allow uh, of the glioblastoma and this had allowed to retain the phenotypic heterogeneity as present in the tumors so there has been the continued presence of non neoplastic cells from the patient tumor and the heterogeneous transcriptional cell state dist distribution which are termed as the metastate tumors which contain heterogeneous neoplastic cells and diverse stromal elements that collectively function are as dynamic ecosystems have been been able to oh, be replicated in this particular pde models and this particular because of such existence of this the neoplastic cells and the metastates together has been able to, has been very difficult for researchers to establish the pde models so the patient derived explants can be as much as good as a uh, tumor models the this particular uh, group has been able to compare cellular fidelity by using the single cell genomic and the transcriptome sequencing to trace the populations present in the original tumors through their establishment of the pdes and the subsequent pd facages here we can see how the tumor cell metastases and if you can see only some of them are retained so it may not be here uniform whatever the whole tumor tme the two stroma elements along with the other uh, other cells are the non malignant cells are not particularly integrated in the particular glios glioma spheres cultures but in the patient derived explant cultures the whole tumor can be mimicked and it can be established as culture in the in vitro scenario in the lab and the same targeted therapy the patient is taking can be administered here this is a workflow for a typical pde culture 
here we have a tissue processing where the directly surgically resected tissues which has been has to be brought from theater and then that has been has to be cut into small 1 mm or 2 mm bits and it has to be recovered by giving washes in a uh, hanks balance salt solution and to, and washes with a particular antibiotics and then it is established either in this particular metagrid or in particular uh, collagen or in the dental sponges however and after they have been established for 24 hours the cell the cultures they are going to we will be treating them with the drug drugs the different drugs such as whatever for example if it is a tki inhibitor for lung cancer will be given here or if i have to try any different combinations they will also be give, administered here after further after the required time necessary incubation time for say for example which will be standardized 24 to 74 two hours the, the tissue sections will be fixed and for, will be embedded in slides and then we will be labeling it for different markers such as i61 or the prap here and here we can clearly see the control population the drug in the presence of the drug how the different the prap and the ki61 here we can see that the absence of this particular marker the application of the tuber mask and the digestion of the image it we can it can be it can allow the segregation of the staining in the tumor and the stroma. The ragdafs at the depict uh, at the bottom they depict the four quadrants which shows the percentage proliferation and the cell death. That is your the Ki sixty seven and the C parp here at this particular quadrant. In, in the stroma tumor for the non squamous cell lung cancer stroma PDEs which are treated with your vehicle control and with the drug. This is a typical workflow of a part this is a word for the complete PD models more complete protocols and it, it is very important to, to have a this particular marker ki61 which will show the proliferative index so and then both the the PDEs retain a, a expression of genes with the oncogenic roles in lima and they maintain the similar clustering patterns as with the same host host tumor regions from the single patient patient samples or also from the same different patients therefore compared to the parental tissues pde show consistent and potentially predictable changes in the gene expression of selected processes this is the prior strategy to establish the for the ovarian cell line so for the ovarian cancer for several all solid tumors mostly the pd can be easily established where from the after the surgery restriction from the ovary there are see as i mentioned before they with the using in this all conditions have to be done in a sterile conditions like as for the the same cell culture requirement will may will also be a, enough for the for, for growing the PD for establishing the PDE models. The after the tissues are minced to 1 to 0 point or to 0 point mm squares, they are either grown in this orbital agitation or even in as mentioned before in the, the sponges or in other gel metal grids. And then how are they characterized? After exposing them to the drug, they are uh, so we have the control which is untreated, the carboplatin and the paclitaxel which are given to the patient for the uh, for the administration uh, during the patient the same the pde mo models also here you can get a picture first thing the for for the patient to see the outcome of the drug it may take a very long time whereas at this particular stretch here in the pds within 72 hours if the whole tumor has been uh, the, uh, used in the right conditions i mean first thing we have to make in point the tumor should be immediately placed from the patient immediately it should be established in culture then only we can be able to correlate the dr drug response of the tumor uh, to, of the pd model and the tumor after we characterize the, them they are, are going to be they will be established for the uh, proof of concept drug challenge now coming to another very important model, um, preclinical model as the organoids. What are organoids are three dimensional structures of the organs and there are many organoids developed for all the solid tumor molecules or smaller tumors such as the brain, the lung, the stomach, the breast and so on and so forth.
This organites have opened the new avenue for development of novel and more physiological human cancer models. Such preclinical models they are they are essential for more efficient translation and uh, for of basic research into new and also for bringing in novel treatment regimen regimens for cancer therapy. So wild wild type organites can generally be grown from embryonic and adult stem cells and display and these display self organizing capacities when with phenoc and with phenocopies of the essential organ or organs from which they are derived from. So genetic modifications of orga organoids has allowed for disease modeling in a setting that approaches the physiological environment or or. or organites can be grown with high efficiency from patients derived from both from healthy and tumor tissues and they potentially enable as mentioned before lot of drug screenings and the development of individual treatment regimen so first thing the sato et al they developed a 3d epithelial organoids and they have reestablished from the uh, lgr5 interstitial stem cells so and what they have essentially found out that uh, upon emb embedment of the stem cells into matrix cells cells can be cultured under ser serum free conditions which we mix the in, in vivo stem cells nishi and which involves this particular uh, wnt antagonist and the ligand of lgr5 this is very very critical finding for the development of organoids this culture protocol formed the starting point for other organite cultures for multiple mouse and human epithelium which includes the colon liver pancreas prostate and stomach the fallopian tubules esophagus the breast and the intermediate have been very well have got very well organite for uh, how organites develop organites can be expanded long term and they are very well advantage with them as they can be cryo preserved and as mentioned before they can be genetically modified and these modified organoids are both genetically and phenotypically stable organoid banks are very well available in across many top labs of the across the world this is the scheme of a stem cell driven tissue renewal in organs such as the intestine and stomach as we all aware a stem cell concomitantly self renews and regenerates uh, rapidly dividing into transient amplifying in daughter cells via asymmetric cell division this transient amplifying cells undergo several rounds of discussion division before differentiating into the functional cell types of the adult tissue adult cell stem cells potentially can follow the three follow three modes of cell division symmetric division to generate two stem cells asymmetric generation to generate two stem uh, to generate one stem cell and one ta cell or a asymmetric generation to take the two ta cells as mentioned before organites can be mentioned can be established from both patient derived healthy and the tumor tissue cells here we can see the four types of organoids the healthy organite the hepatocyte organite the tumor tumor organite as represented by the different colors for for example given drugs both the drug a drug a b c are treated in this particular all the three in the uh, including your epitopic cell it could be and we can even check the toxicity of the to specific uh, the the specificity of the targeted therapy is it specific to an health only the tumor and now not harming the healthy cells and can be uh, and in the same way the liver organoids can be uh, checked for the liver toxicity testing which is very very vital part for the drug, drug pharmacokinetic studies they can be used in genomics the organoids they can be ex we can study the complete genome of each organoids and we can continue to have this living organoids biobank which is very well prevalent this is the role model for for how a complete personalized medicine for one particular individual can be taken up forward for testing the efficacy of the different drugs such as this particular as it's shown here so because it is toxicity to the drug a is toxic to the normal cells drug drug b has been approved here for the choose choose the drug b for to treat the patient organites can be generated both from the tissue derived cancer cells or the 
induced pluripotent stem cells. So, to generate organites from the TDCs, uh, tissue samples are obtained from the humans or mostly the mouse or also the mouse models. So, and the first it is the interstitial tissue was the first mod organoid model to be to develop. So, here the interstitial tissue will be opened up. The tissue samples are uh, the are the interstitial tissue samples are opened, washed, and cut into small fragments at the chest to two to four mm to increase the surface area for enzyme di digestion or further mechanistic. Uh, processes. This particular digestion will allow for the isolation of single cells or single cells or single interstitial stem cells or cribs. After several wash rounds of washing and purification, the ha harvested stem cells or the cribs will be used for generating the organoid cultures for expansion. To, to, and this is further has, can be further processed and and by addition of several particular growth medium and differentiation factors, this organ particular organoids can be generated. To generate organoids from the uh, induced pluripotent stem cells, genetic engineering can be used. So, here the IPCs, IPSCs is are maintained and expanded as undifferentiated clonal populations on particular feeder cells, on particular feeder cells or particular extracellular matrix substrates to aggregate to embryoid bodies typically embryoid bodies are formed so aggregation to embryo as we can see here so typically induced pluripotent stem cells are harvested as cell aggregates which preserve the cell cell contact and yield cell populations with very high variability these aggregates are further induced as we can see here uh, through germ layer specification to form endodermal spheres which can be seen here endodermal spheres then the mesodermal spheres and the neuroectodermal matrix for additional exp expansions the starting population for organoid cultures are generally obtained from the adult tissue or adult or fetal tissue biopsy samples this is very very important process for the procedures for development of establishment of organoid cultures and coming to the different uh, organite types, the tissue fragments and the explants are generated from the original cell types and ECMs where the physical connections the, and the paracrine signaling networks are maintained. This is very very important for if, if a tumor tissue fragment or a normal healthy tissue fragment is um, taken. It is a challenge to isolate the com uh, it took, uh, to to ascertain the contribution of an indi individual cell type. It's definitely a challenge to establish in the progression, in the growth or the response of the organite to that particular drug. And this organoids, this particular tissue fragment organoids had display high patient to patient variability. Whereas the reconstituted are, uh, organoids are assembled in vitro uh, from cultured or sorted cells. This permits expansion and modular uh, assembly of components. However, some pop, pop, some pop, subpopulations or phenotypes such as senescent and hormone uh, responsive cells may be lost during culture. So, it is very very important to maintain the particular growth factors along with during this culture and again it may be variable or it may not be very much uniform across all organite formations. And another type stem cell derived organites are differentiated from the multipotent uh, adult uh, tissue stem cells or or the PSCs, what which are which we have seen under uh, different appropriate different conditions, cell culture conditions. PSCs, uh, PSCs specifically can generate red tissues and cell types, but have limited maturity and they lose the hallmarks of a, a aging. They are they have reliance on exogenous growth functions and differentiation protocols. These are the different types of organites. If you recollect our first slide where we have said that the first organoids are to be developed are the for the interstitial. So, the first human, for, this is a typical protocol for patient divided organ, uh, organoid cultures for human col colonic mucosa where the mucosa is uh, 
fresh human mucosa which can be where the epithelial crypts are uh, and they are allowed to establish as organoids and here we can see the after growing for some time in the matrix, matrix we can see the epithelial cell the central luminin and the, and which this is all embedded in the matrigen thus they a critical player is the uh, in the all, uh, establishment of organoids is the is the stem cell which is a self renewing cell and it can give rise to different uh, cell types within the same tissues so they have as i mentioned in the first class they have the unique property of having a, a leucine rich repeat which contains g protein couple receptor 5 so once organoids have been established as the different as mentioned before they require complex uh, complex and individual combination of growth factors survival so for the survival and maintenance some of these growth factors are also obtained from the patient's autologous serum or from the same body of the body fluids from the originating tumor patient so and uh, organoids for different tumors will have different growth requirements so subtle changes to these uh, have, have growth requirements have to be modified from based on from lab to lab for example no, normal organoids will compete will outcompete colonic cancer organoids when cultured medium if if it is used for normal organoid colonic organoids so it has to be potentially separate from uh, which is which, which has to be different for cancer colonic organoids development because there is however the sensitivity to of the organoids to the growth factors the sensitivity of organoids to growth factors is very very a uh, vital and it can be used uh, used be used be used to employ many of the normal colonic organs for example the normal colonic organoids they require the ligand wnt3a4 survival whereas the more um, whereas as we are aware the colonic cancer cells they demonstrate hyperactivation of the wnt beta catenin pathway which is independent of the wnt wnt3a therefore selective re removal of the wnt from organoid medium prevents normal colonic organoids from out competing the colonic cancer organoids so not all colonic tumor cells they display aberrant wnt signaling though and therefore it is important to exploit or to explore the implications of selecting tumor cells by the requirements for specific factors as demonstrated here the wnt wnt factor for colonic cancer so it it is very important to use different organ uh, to use growth factor requirements and uh, to be informed of the growth factor requirements to characteristic rather than also the selective uh, rather rather than the select human tumor organoids to alter the organoid functions the growth factor selection is important and also the LA altering the concentration of that particular growth factor in the medium is important and uh, uh, the two important to characterize the organoid cultures before experimentation so as we can see here how the growth for enriched medium embedded in uh, extracellular matrix and it is you have the patient derived tumor organoids formation here and once what is the state uh, end point analysis can we uh, check for the correlation from the original tumor before the organoid is formed it will be correlated with the original tumor and then if, uh, for example you will characterize the whole genome sequencing or the exome sequencing or the proteomic profiles of the whole tumor and match it with the organoid with the organoid form and then again uh, this particular organoids can they can be cryo preserve uh, they can go through the process of cryo preservation and also through paraffin em embedded molecule so several research molecules for uh, research protocols can be ha have can be streamlined using this particular organoids for one particular cancer molecule this slide shows the downstream processing of the organoids for further characterization here as i have mentioned here maybe for for this is the liver organoids here we have the healthy liver and the 
the different different liver the cancer liver all that they have been taken they have been processed in the lab for establishment of organoid cultures so isolation of cells from patient samples and organoid cultures are all are all happened here and further even the 3d culture or expansion also can uh, is, is uh, can taken in place parallelly and the organoids are biological and molecular characterization here is the typical characterization of cancer organoids from liver where the normal where the normal tissue and the cron uh, the chronic cancer tissues they are all collected established as organoids and the dna after the dissection and the dna uh, after the dissection the establishment of the normal healthy cancer cell, cancer tissue as well as the cancer uh, healthy to uh, healthy tissue as well as the tumor cells the organoids are established expanded and the dna and the rna and the histology is take uh, taken up the dna and rna for the whole genome sequencing or the transcriptome sequencing respectively and the histology for different pathological markers is taken here this gives the this particular give, slide gives the histography for for the hnd for the organoid and from the tissue where a lot of characteristics from the uh, for especially for the cancer tissues they are all retained both in the organoid as as well as in the cancer in the cancer tissues so this the histologic analysis of this liver particular analysis the top row shows uh, shows organoid bright field scales and the bottom row shows the hnd staining of organoids so here this shows the analysis of specific marker expression especially for your afp that is the hepato hepatocyte hepatocellular carcinoma where the hcc stands for and the ep epcam that is the for the cc marker and the dapi staining which shows is shows in blue so organite for uh, or propagation is is uh, is represented as growth and splitting curves where dots represent the splitting time time point and arrows represent the expansion here which we can clearly see the how the lt1 and the lt2 we can be clearly mentioned here and the analysis of the genetic changes can be clearly seen here whether if this were the light blue measures shows that the uh, th this particular tissue is in concordance this particular the dna analysis shows that the 60 80% of the dna is in concordant with the original tumor whereas this particular is the one in red which is a very small portion which we can clear is uh, typical organoid specific and it some of them is only the tissue specific so by and large majority of the of uh, characteristics of the original tumor are retained in the organoids and even the drug resistance also for the particular uh, for the particular concentration um, can be seen so for example gemcitabine here which is used here and for the different conditions the organoids and their responses can be clearly shown here so transplantation into suppose this if these organoids can also be transplanted into the into the mice models which has shown that uh, and they can the histology and the xenograft analysis matches the patient's original tumor tissue here the pancreatic island organoids is respected here as i mentioned before this organoids are very very well growth specific for the growth medium and the growth factors they are growing in the organoids growing in the matrigel they exhibit here the spherical shape as shown here and it is and these spherical organoids are surrounded by by an endothelial cells as as we can uh, and as we can see in detail in the high my high higher magnification here which is which is represented here and this expression uh, after during the microscopy we can see immunofluorescence or histochemical staining the expression of insulin uh, in b i i in uh, insulin beta cells glucagon that is your ccg alpha cells uh, stomatin and pancreatic proglot uh, po polypeptide can be clearly seen in all this particular matured organoids the morphology of the matured organoids uh, induced through prolonged culture for a total of 30 days here in this particular experiment the organoids are, are surrounded by the endothelial cells 
as shown here and they they are uh, they are shown by the uh, cd31 the endo, uh, endo, endothelial marker as we can clearly see here staining for some of the key transcription factors and differentiation markers is also shown here there have been for three molecule three rounds this shows the protocol how the uh, organoids are maintained where the pancreatic island organoids they are they function their functionality is validated in vitro in vitro where organoids are subsequently sequentially incubated with low and high concentration of glucose for three rounds and they are washed followed by c peptide elasa and calcium imaging here the rise of the c peptide here is uh, here as we can clearly see is indicating of of a sharp response to of a glucose stimulation to different and here this g represents the response the representative curve of intensity of the calcium signaling in indicating the organoids capability of responding in very well to glucose g represents here representative curve of intensity of calcium calcium signaling trace imaging which indicates that organic uh, organoids are capable of responding to the glucose with high or low calcium ca activity which is consistent of the high or the low uh, glucose stimulation so very very well uh, well il uh, illustrated campland uh, pancreatic island organized organoids which has been uh, reported finally this uh, what uh, what is the endpoint analysis after this particular this organoids can be separate uh, can be gone for many generations as mentioned as mentioned before can they can be even be given in uh, taken this organoids can be taken with the organoid transplant can be done and organ and the first thing they can be given into the mice models this is the very much very very important uh, this organoids or fresh islets as positive control are transplanted into the kidneys of a capsule of uh, st streptozoitin induced diabetic mouse models islet organoid functional validation here it is happening in this my mice models so organoids or fresh islets of pancreatic fresh islets as positive control they are transplanted into the kidney capsule here into the kidney cap into the kidney capsule of streptozoitin induced diabetic mouse followed by monitoring of certain physiological indexes which indicates the rescue of the diabetic phenotypes finally these transplants are removed and the surgical surge and the surging blood, blood glucose level in the mice are noted by the plasma insulin weight and body weight so here so organoids are very well so we have started here with an in vitro here and then moved moved uh, in moved on to an in vivo conditions here this is how the pancreatic isl islet uh, organoids are well established and used in diabetic mouse models A recently developed a uh, method called conditional reprogramming it facilitates the establishment of 2d cultures from normal and tumor epithelial cells with very high efficiency these cultures can be maintained long term and they have they are known to retain a stable karyotype this there is a presence of a need for the, there is a need for the presence of an roh kinase inhibitor and the fibroblast feeder cells so patient derived tumor xenografts they have the advantage of the as we are all aware have the advantage of mimicking the biological characteristics of humor uh, human tumor much 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 better than the organized model the ability to serially transplant into the to ability to increasingly so can as much as we can passage many organites can be also passage in mice model molecules so they have been this organoids or the uh, the whole purpose of this slide is to uh, emphasize that the patient derived explants or the patient derived uh, organoids that is uh, or the patient adult stem cell derived organoids or the tumor cell tumor derived organoids are very very important in for to first establish a preclinical model and then then to move a mouse model as mouse models require more is more costly requires a better skill set and and the and it involves the use uh, use of limited uh, animals and limited engraftment efficiencies for subset of patient 
tumors so and moreover this pd it, so it's always so here we can clearly see whether there is a conditional reprogramming for this particular cells programming for this particular cell lines or the particular patient divided organ uh, or organized the pdx we have discussed all the several advantages and disadvantages of using in the uh, organize or the pdtx but here we would clearly emphasize here only on this particular point it is that they are expanded easy to expansion is much is well achieved only in the cancer cell line then as compared to the other models and the 3d growth patterns are also very easy for the cancer cell line as compared to the uh, to the other models and only this pdx and the patient derived uh, patient derived uh, tumor models they retain the original tumor in interactions they incorporate the immune system and they have the genetic cancer mod mod modeling and but however they lack even the, the some some of this particular uh, pdx model they lack the uh, high throughput drug screens so tumor organoids can be manipulated to improve the functional utility in cancer research as i have mentioned before they can be genetically edited through the crispr cas9 technologies they can be genetically uh, through the crispr uh, they can be established in co culture with other cell lines such as your uh, your uh, tumor that has the Im immune cells then you have the endothelial cells stromal cells and they can be micro Uh, injected with any other growth microbes or antigens or chemicals some uh, then some several uh, experiments can be used to uh, reveal novel insights into ca cancer path pathophysiologically as we have shown uh, shown in the b before and then immunohistochemistry can be easily done on this particular organoids and then even you can even bring it up suppose you have the single cells you can even bring it up in a co culture where you have the insert maybe you can have another cancer cell line or another organoid here and then you can establish it in co culture and then they can be done easily flexible for immunofluorescence as i have shown before and then they are very very useful scope for organoid on chip which we will be discuss uh, with discussing later and establishing of the xenografts so very quickly we will be coming to uh, because it's a very vital part and which is how the whole direction of of the preclinical model of uh, developing cancer preclinical model is uh, moving to we will be talking of Uh, the single organ on chips or the multiple organ on chips so first as i mentioned before gut on a chip device for drug absorption studies was established before where here a transfer cell culture uh, cell culture insert that was the inspiration for this gut on a uh, chip is flowing microsystem here the drug in the medium it will be just drug in the medium here here the drug in the medium and uh, will be will be in the epical site and whereas the medium will be on the uh, transport to the basal lateral part of the slide of the dish this is the co culture insert and then in inter intestinal uh, absorption of orally administered drug is con uh, is commonly evaluated in this particular transfer assays where a layer of interstitial epithelial cells is cultured on the permeable here insert placed in one of the wells of a cell culture plate as you can clearly see here then the intestinal uh, cells act as a barrier between the the top per uh, uh, the intestinal cells is cultured on the permeable in one of the wells of the culture plate uh, culture plate these intestinal cells act as a barrier between the top compartment mimicking the gut lumen and the bottom compartment mimicking the blood blood stream drug absorption can be measured over time by analyzing samples taken from both both the compartments this has been intestine uh, you suppose imagine in this co culture this requires a typical a 6 well plate or a 35 mm dish and if this can be taken up into the microfluidic channel level uh, it can be taken up it can be easy for handling it can be easy for large scale, large scale drug assays or high throughput say, screening these interstitial cells act as a barrier between the top compartment mimicking the gut lumen and the bottom compartment which mimics the blood blood stream 
and drug absorption as mentioned can be measured can be measured over time by analyzing samples taken from both compartments it has to be this has been translated into a microfluid time use a microfluidic format as i mentioned before where the interstitial uh, where the barrier consists of a, a pdms membrane with transvel with the micro channel contains uh, containing the dynamic flow of cell medium and which is this is still in conceptual and design the pdms is used because it is here this particular membrane it is used because it is is a, a transparent biocompatible and multi and it is a multiple silicon rubber which molds pro, uh, where, and this molds are produced either by the photolithography or by 3d printing and so it is here if you can clearly see how the engineering technology has come into aid to develop this organ of uh, organ on chips devices here the caco cells the golden standard cell line for uh, drug absorption studies we can be cultured here in this particular uh, we can clearly see here can be uh, can be cultured here drug absorption studies and these less cells may la lack many other functions that interstitial epithelial cells have but they are very suitable for absorption studies the interstitial uh, organoid chips are kept in the incubator with the cell medium provided by the two syringe pumps without without the recirculation this device was was inspect can be inspected by optical microscopy and the permeability of model drugs will be monitored through high performance liquid chromatography and fluorescence based assays with the samples of organoid chips format including the testing including the testing for even your antiviral drugs have been very well developed using this particular models so for example the process of viral infection is far more complex and requires multiple different organ functions including immune components to be present so a similar 2d organ on chip cancer device was above was used based on the porous membrane but with the in inclusion of more biological functionalities such as the far the uh, function of both the interstitial epithelium and the blood vessel wall and the immune uh, com component have been used here this b represents the uh, multi organ on chip models which includes 4 7 or 10 morgan models that can interact one another via the micro channels as we can clearly see here here you have the gut the brain the liver scaphoid and this is all very well engineered the different uh, the different various layer they, there are different connections for the cell culture medium and pneumatic channels to acute integrated micro micro paths the different approaches for multi organ uh, organ on chips for drug metabolisms was developed and it is aimed at developing a physiologically relevant relevant multi organ system for drug discovery this is very very vital the system embedded four seven or 10 organ models as as we can clearly seen here this integrated device was fabricated with 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 easier to process ps that is your polysulfonate and polyurethrin with integrated air pressure controlled valves as built in pumps to serial to recirculate medium in a more controllable fashion for fashion this a lot of materials engineering and lot of 3d printing printing science has to be involved so in this process the organs models were of human origins uh, origin cell primary cells from cancer cell, uh, from cell lines or from uh, immuno uh, uh, ipss immunoplorotin stem cells stem derived cells and included the kidney muscle liver and gut among other other organs here the pumping system was incorporated into the final device as we can clearly seen here this the complexity uh, of this particular system has made it necessary to answer a more com com complex scientific question but it was it is like you you need to have so much of engineering in technology but but the various pieces of so much of supporting equipment which is required to maintain this particular organoids in an active state or in live state and there is a lot there is a lot of additional cost for setting up this particular system 
then it they came up with a miniature system such as these that are for for a miniature for testing for toxicities a testing of various anti cancer this system contained a reconfigurable design with multiple organs and includes a solid tumor derived cells and also leukemia to study the effects of anti cancer drugs on their target as well as the the study of the anti cancer drugs on the, for the toxicity of this particular uh, uh, cell, cells of the compounds on other organisms it's still in the conceptualization and the design phase and cancer cells modeling various malignant conditions are part, are cultured in all this particular organ on chips similar to other systems this device is more or less pumpless and hence more user friendly and it and it doesn't require more supporting machines as this particular platforms and it can be placed in a rocking shaker for a gravity induced recirculating flows or when therefore they reducing lot of the lab laboratory technical machine which is required for this maintaining maintaining this of particular platform so multi multi uh, organoid on chips are very very developed consisting of several organoid on chips compartments together in one device and my this is composed of microfluids micro channels and chambers with with and even you even have the green dyes also for, to be filled to for visualization and observations quickly we will be going through here we, even though you have the different uh, how do we collect the biological results from organoid on chips systems as i had mentioned before there is a, a integrated sensors and there are there is a myer this is a very uh, for famous term for organoid on chips here the microscopy and the high content imaging it is very important to collect the biological material from the organoids of uh, organ on chip systems from time to time during the grow during the cultivation of organoids there are many several in situ measurements during operation of the recirculating organ on chip systems and this allow near uh, real time assessment of cell states and functionalities the integrated electrodes and the cantilevers in the organoid on chips may devices they can be configured to measure to measure the electrochemical changes or the signals which are indicative of the transepithelial electrical assistance as me had mentioned here which is very important for to using the micro electrode arrays and, and the to and to me and to measure the cell tissue contractility using the cantilevers as uh, in the aa as measured here the there is high high my, microscopy and high content imaging are are also among the most widespread analytical methods used for uh, and they are they are they find a very they can be in very good visual in inspection for organoid on chips they are all this organoid on chips they are all usually constructed with uh, glass materials or fiber materials that they are easy to uh, to be held on stage in the microscope and they are where they are uh, micro optic friendly and they will be falling within the imaging depth of the con conventional fluorescence or the confocal microscopes it is very well convenient to perform in situ staining or uh, of the cells and tissues in chip with fluorescent stains or antibodies to assess the cell viability or expression of specific tissue specific or cancer specific biomarkers for this organ on chips uh, and all this particular micro channel fluidics allows for the uh, delivery of this particular reagents and dyes into the to the particular organs high content imaging everything is possible for this particular organ on chips yes as i mentioned before a uh, uh, different uh, uh, analytes using lcms uh, and other technologies they can be employed here we can even use the down screaming for your whole genome sequencing the ngs the rt pcr for selection of or different markers for select for assessing the organoid on chip these are the current limitations of 
uh, organoid and chips web we have the accumulation of dead cells and debris inside the uh, organoid lumens and then there is limited control over heterogeneity or non screenable or less reproducible morphology which may not be relevant in the particular scenarios or organoids do not recapitulate uh, the cellular and physiological com uh, complexity of the uh, native tissues so but there are definitely we can have still up for example for accumulation of dead cells and uh, cell debris inside cystic uh, in this particular uh, uh, cystic organoid lumina they have been overcome by designing a perfusible uh, open ended structure that can use inducible flow to wash out a uh, flow is used here to wash out the dead cell debris which are more compatible for long term experiments organoids grown in ma matrigel even the, though they display high variability of cell heterogeneity as we can clearly see and differences in morphology but the, these platforms are they can be over overcome by using a grid here as we can clearly see here with pattern synthetic ecm that provide cues for so you have a different uh, you have a specific uvs which can provide cues for cell differentiation these platforms are additionally cell type derived these platforms are compatible with high throughput screenings organoids do not replicate cellular and physiological complexity of the native tissues they can be technology would be enable to have a control micro environment as it's shown here for example soluble four factors or as i mentioned before like here went wnt uh, for the uh, deprivation for the color for a selection of your cloak cancer cell colon cancer cells over the normal colon cancer cells and then even you have the oxygen also as one more very easy factor to regulate in the organoid chips the organoids can be very well manipulated to require to suit the to mimic the tumor micro environment as per the host we have come to the end of the session and where we here to be we have discussed in detail about the different patient derived clinical models uh, which is and both the patient derived explants and patient derived organoids so two very important clinical models which can play a very good role for in the drug discovery or during the therapy of to, to predict the therapeutic or outcome in the pay for the patient are very well discussed we have discussed the limitations of both the, the pdes as well as the patient derived organoids in the next session we will discuss the animal models the mouse models thank you